We begin our greatest ever countdown at number 10 with a car whose name literally says it all. The legend has it that when the designer first brought it out to the factory, one of the workers, he said, he said, Countach, which means, wow, my God, incredible. The Lamborghini Countach was an outrageously, deliberately provocative, sexy car. You looked at it and went, wow. I mean, it was quite uh, jaw-dropping. A Countach is, you know, every teenage boy's wet dream of a sports car. The Countach qualifies for our list because it broke new ground for sports cars. It looked like nothing else that had ever come before it. It was a very dramatic car. I mean, it's angular, and it was all sort of carved out of a piece of rock and then put on the road and low down. And it was supposed to stop you short and say, that's different, which it was. The reason it looked the way it did was the Formula One technology that made its way into the car. Pirelli designed the tires for the car uh, that were extremely wide. I mean, they're, they're one of the largest uh, tires that were ever put on a production car. In fact, that's the secret to this car. Because the tires were almost double the normal size, the body had to be built around them, helping to give the Countach its outrageous shape. Only three were produced each week, which meant the waiting list to get one was a year. It also came with a price tag of $150,000, inspiring the phrase supercar. Supercars is a name given to a car that goes above a certain speed, i.e. sort of somewhere um, between here and Mars, and will go faster than anyone needs to go. Um, so we're talking 150 plus, it's certainly in the mid 70s. But the Countach was more than just the fastest sports car of its day. Just like Farrah Fawcett, it was also a pinup, one that ended up in teenage boys' bedrooms all over the world. Uh, including mine. I just dreamed of having one. Eventually, after a two year search, I found one in Alberta, Canada. I found out fortuitously that this particular car was the actual car that was in uh, the poster that I had as a kid. It was from that period in the 70s where the big hairstyles were in, um, the padded shoulders, girls looking sort of big and brazen in Hollywood, and the car looks a bit like that. It's, it's Italian, it's kind of, but it's busty, sexy, glamorous. To drive, I would have to say it was thrilling, but not relaxing. It was not a great long distance car. The noise level was very intense. It was one of those cars that you could say one of the best moments of your life is the first hour you drive a Countach, and, but the second hour is one of the worst experiences of your life. Because you've got no rear vision, you can't see what you're doing most of the time. You know, the Lamborghini factory taught people how to back the car up. And you actually have to put the door up. Crawl out and sit on the sill with one foot on the gas and one hand on the wheel, and then look over your shoulder. So you had to hang out of the car to drive it. It's silly, but uh, for the 15-year-old for the boy in you, it's absolutely fantastic. It's a car, you know, you take from your house around and then come back to your house and it wasn't meant to be reversed. Like many things that got our attention in the 70s and 80s, the Countach doesn't necessarily stand the test of time. For a lot of people, this car is downright ugly. It was, it was a cross between Star Trek and something your, the hairdresser would really want to travel around in. So when you look in a Countach, if you can get lower down, on the, or learn up down the road and actually look in the window, you expect to see someone with a big gold chain around their neck and, you know, a few hairs poking out and a shiny shirt uh, looking frightfully pleased with himself. It's a car that's meant to be aggressive, but it's a kind of BG on wheels. You always imagine the person that drove it looked like Robin or Barry Gibb and had big bouffant hair of the time and a medallion down here and big flared trousers. That's what it was like. It's flamboyant, it's baroque, it's a combination of Liberace and Hugh Hefner. It sums up the 80s and 70s. It's just gross, I'm sorry. Yes, it was one of the first supercars. It turned heads wherever it went, and just looking at it helps revive the 80s. But looking at it, ultimately, is the problem with the Countach. That's why it goes no higher up the list than number 10.